One of the most incredible things about Everything Everywhere All at Once was how it cut across the normally cynical world of film criticism and became accepted by basically everyone as a truly great movie. It's just too bad that it's actually pure garbage, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and one of the most subversive and demoralizing pieces of propaganda that Hollywood has ever put out. The thing that people always seem to forget about movies is that movies are a way to tell stories. All the great acting, all the great filmmaking techniques, and all the great special effects are just tools that we use to create a story. And by story, I don't mean the events that happen in the movie. I mean the themes and messages that the movie is trying to communicate to us. The things that directors and writers want us to believe, or want to convince us are true. So what's the real story of everything, everywhere, all at once? What is the movie really trying to communicate? And what are the things the director and writer want to convince us are true? The movie begins with Evelyn stressing about an IRS audit that her family is going through, and about the upcoming birthday party for her aging father. We then see multiple scenes of Waymond and Joy alternatively trying to get her attention to deal with some emotional issue they have. In Waymond's case, it's his perception that Evelyn doesn't respect him and thinks he is weak. In Joy's case, it's the fact that her mother doesn't approve of her being a lesbian. Evelyn addresses these interruptions by closing herself off and using the business and the audit as an excuse to avoid dealing with either of them. And here we have the first clues about what this movie is really trying to say. Wayman's response to his problems is to revert to complete abandonment of responsibility. He pays no attention to the things that are bothering Evelyn or the real-world responsibilities he has as a father and a husband, and instead just dances around doing nonsensical things like a young child. Joy's response to her problems is similar to Wayman's, she just ignores them completely. Her parents are facing the likely destruction of their livelihood and potentially even criminal charges of tax fraud, but Joy shows absolutely zero concern about this and doesn't even ask her parents how it's going. Her grandfather has come all the way from China and her mother is desperate to gain his approval, but Joy scoffs at the notion that her actions may have an adverse effect on that relationship. Now there may be some validity to the idea of staying optimistic even when things are looking bad. And there may be some validity to the idea that being open about your lifestyle is more important than how other people might react to it. But even if those are valid ideas, they still have consequences. Living in denial about the failure of your business and livelihood could result in you losing everything and falling into poverty. And forcing everyone to take a public stance on your chosen lifestyle could result in some of them taking a stance that excludes you from their life. Maybe Waymond and Joy are aware of these possible consequences and are just willing to take the risk anyway for the sake of their own emotional health. But the thing about those risks is both of them directly affect Evelyn. It's not just Waymond facing poverty and criminal charges, Evelyn is facing those same realities. And it's not just Joy who might lose any relationship with her grandfather, it might lead to a breakdown of Evelyn's relationship with him too. The movie very clearly and very deliberately does not have either Waymond or Joy recognize this fact or show even the slightest bit of concern about how their choices might affect Evelyn. They are both so busy asking for Evelyn to pay attention to their desired outcomes that they never bothered to ask her if those outcomes are desirable for her. They both feel a certain way and they don't bother to wonder how Evelyn might feel about it. They just both insist that she start feeling the exact same way as them. And both of them threaten consequences for her if she doesn't. Evelyn serves as the stand-in for everyone in the audience who might have some kind of disagreement with the concepts that the movie is trying to push on the audience. And so we are made to see her as a bitchy, disagreeable failure. She is presented as the worst version of herself, a bitter, aging woman who is full of regret for all the other lives she could have lived. She is too cowardly to face the truth of Joy's nihilism and too cynical to choose the blissful ignorance of Waymond. So the movie punishes her. She is forced to go live all those other lives and see how meaningless they are. How even if she made better choices or had more success, she would still just be a useless rock. A pinata being pummeled by a faceless, uncaring, and childish god. An ugly, disgusting monstrosity with a horrible deformation. If she sings, then she has to be blind. If she becomes successful, then she has to live alone. If she pushes her daughter to be better, then she just ends up creating a psychopathic, nihilistic monster. Because it's all meaningless, as absurd as putting everything on a bagel. Our choices don't matter and our dreams will only lead us to even greater pain. If you try to fight against it, you just make it worse. You might as well just close your eyes and accept annihilation, because nothing really matters and you're just a giant piece of shit anyway. But before the audience can really process the problem with this kind of thinking, the movie jumps in to hand us the solution that it wants us to accept. The only way to win is to go along with the agenda. If you want your husband to act like a man, then he'll divorce you. If you want your father's approval, then he'll be even more disappointed in you. And if you want your child to be the best version of herself, then she'll just kill herself. But if you just let go, if you pretend that your husband's weakness is actually strength, and reject your father's opinions, and stop having any expectations for your child, then it will all just magically work out. 
Your husband's childish denial will somehow convince the auditor to give you another chance. Your father won't just accept your lesbian daughter, but he'll start accepting your choices too. And your daughter will give you a nice hug and stop threatening to commit suicide. If you reject the message, then you will suffer. But if you accept it, then you'll be rewarded. So just give up. Call yourself a piece of shit and say that nothing matters. And stop trying to improve yourself or the people you love. Ignore the uncomfortable realities of life and pretend that consequences just don't exist. So what's the real story of everything, everywhere, all at once? What is the movie really trying to communicate? And what are the things the director and writer want to convince us are true? That nothing matters, that everything is just a random, meaningless collection of disconnected events, that knowledge leads to nihilism, that morality is just a stupid illusion, that wanting the best for yourself will only lead to self-destruction, and that in the end we're all just rocks floating in a sea of nothingness. Now, selling this kind of story to a modern audience does take some doing. Sure, you can just come out and say it, but you'll get a lot of kickback from the public if you do. You might catch a few vulnerable teenagers and you might demoralize a few lonely adults, but most people will recognize what you're doing and they'll call you out for it. But let's say you dress it up a little. You find a director who has a good eye for visual storytelling. You hire some actors who can give some really great performances. You set everything to an epic theatrical score to tug at people's heartstrings at all the right times. And finally, you scale down your budget and storytelling so that your movie seems like the little guy finally pulling out a win against the big studios. Well, if you do all that, then you'll probably fool everyone who isn't willing to take a closer look at your story. But if anyone ever does take that closer look, then they might find out what you really think. That everything is shit, and everywhere is hell, and even damnation is okay, as long as it happens all at once.